a haven of delight? Brother Ward, please. Facing the outer harbor on the seashore of Gloucester, Massachusetts, is an eight-foot bronze statue of a man who represents the over 5,000 fishermen who have died at sea because at a time of turbulence, they were not able to reach a safe haven. The distress experienced by these fishermen can be compared to the turbulent times the Israelites underwent while being held captive in Babylon. I invite you to take notice of their source of refuge as described by the psalmist. Please turn with me to the 107th Psalm as we consider together verses 28 through 30. That's Psalm 107, starting at verse 28. It says, And they began crying out to Jehovah in their distress, and out of distress was upon them, he brings them forth. Now, notice Jehovah's saving power in verse 29. He causes the windstorm to stand at a calm, so that the waves of the sea keep quiet. And now, take notice of the outcome in verse 30. And they rejoice, because these become still, and he leads them to the haven of their delight. This haven of delight mentioned in verse 30 proved to be the land of Judah, where the Israelites sought refuge from the Babylonians. As long as they listened to Jehovah's clear direction, they would indeed benefit from his protection. Well, just as the fishermen in Gloucester, Massachusetts, and the Israelites of Bible times were in desperate need of refuge, friends, don't we likewise find ourselves today living in very tumultuous times? In fact, Right in our circuit, we have families who are experiencing very trying economic pressures. Others are facing faith-challenging medical situations. Not to forget our young people who are confronted almost daily with pressures that, quite frankly, are unprecedented for our time. And so, as we contemplate our plight in this old system, we might appropriately ask the questions, where can we go to find refuge? Yes, where is our haven? of delight. When godly wisdom is applied in the family, the Christian home can become more than a place to seek physical shelter. By providing stability, emotional support, and spiritual strength, our homes can indeed become a haven of delight. One Bethelite said of her home while growing up, and I quote, regardless of how bad the situation was at school, I knew that everything would be all right once I arrived home, end of quote. Is this the view we have of our family home? To help make our homes a haven of delight, let's consider two strategies. One of them is considered age-old, and the other, well, let's just say a relatively new concept. And yet the complement of them together will not only increase our family's peace and joy, but enable our homes to really become places of refuge. The AHO strategy was first presented to the nation of Israel by Moses and was recorded for our benefit at Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 6 and 7. I invite you to turn there with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6 as we consider Moses' words there in verse 6. And as we read this, imagine Moses speaking to the people there in verse 6 when he says, And these words that I am commanding you today must prove to be on your heart. You must inculcate them in your son and speak of them. Now, notice the various opportunities. When you sit in your house, when you walk on the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Well, doesn't that pretty much sound like all the time? In fact, most of what we do could fall into one of those four categories. And therein lies our first strategy, to do things together as a family regularly. Let's examine each of those occasions that Moses presented and see how we might make practical application of the council. Eating is one thing that people often do as they sit in their house. In fact, maybe you remember the time when enjoying a meal together as a family was entirely customary. Unfortunately,
This is a custom that many families have abandoned. And yet, meal times continue to provide an excellent opportunity for regular communication and interaction with family members. Good communication at mealtime should include a combination of asking questions and listening patiently to the answers. Parents who listen to their children's comments often receive a glimpse of their children's thinking and feeling. Thus, parents should encourage each family member to participate in the mealtime discussion and warmly, warmly commend them for their contribution. To benefit the most from mealtime discussions, we should resist the urge to become distracted by such things as television or <laughs> listening to music, uh, perhaps engaging in telephone conversations or even texting during mealtime. In addition to fostering good communication, spending time with our families at mealtimes allows us to build good values in our families, such as generosity by, say, sharing the last piece of chicken. Although everybody's eyeing it, if we share it, it shows generosity. Perhaps good manners could be practiced by saying such things as please, thank you. And even the benefits of teamwork can be learned during meal preparation, or perhaps serving our family members during the meal, and certainly by sharing the responsibility of setting and clearing the table. So, how often each week does your family share a meal together? If adjustments are needed, why not start now by sharing at least one meal together each week as you sit in your house? Next, Moses encouraged the Israelite family heads to build up their family spiritually as they walk on the road. This could represent the recreational activities that we plan for our families. Family heads are encouraged to plan the type of recreation that would allow them to interact with their family members rather than encouraging isolation by each family member recreating themselves through the use of electronic gadgetry. Perhaps other spiritually mature ones can be invited to accompany our family in some form of wholesome recreation so that strong friendships can be built, as was the case with young Timothy in the Bible, who was constantly encouraged and built up by the Apostle Paul. Finally, Moses encouraged the Israelite parents to inculcate God's word into the children's hearts, both when they lie down and when they get up. Yes, both the morning and bedtime are excellent opportunities for us to build appreciation for spiritual things in our children. This can be accomplished by praying with them, reading God's word, the Bible daily, and by providing some spiritual gems for them to meditate upon by consideration of the day's text. These steps will serve to round out the consistency in which we train our children. A second, relatively new strategy designed to fortify our family spiritually is the family worship program. And at this time, we're going to discuss three ways that we can derive the most benefit from this arrangement. First of all, our family worship should be regular. This is necessary to help our families withstand the many challenges that they experience. Thus, if you've not done so already, why not set a definite day and time for your family worship evening and be resolved to stick to it. Just as the meetings at the Kingdom Hall are on designated days and times, so should be our family worship. Secondly, parents want to ensure that their family's worship, family worship is practical. This can be accomplished by discussing the challenges that your family will experience in the days ahead, rather than limiting the discussion to a standard formula, such as the discussion of the Watchtower uh, lesson each week. By doing this, your family will recognize the value of the family worship arrangement and may come to view it uh, not only as a place of refuge, but indeed as a haven of delight. Finally, to increase our family's desire to be willing participants in the family worship program, we must make it enjoyable. The best way to accomplish this is by simply asking our families what they would enjoy considering as a part of the family worship experience. You may be surprised at their creativity. Not to be forgotten during family worship is the importance of providing sincere commendation for the things that your family is already doing well, which will no doubt encourage them to continue. At this time, 